Oh, well, happy Wednesday. Welcome to my video. I am Mickey B. Have we met? Is this your first time here? If so, welcome to my video. Why am I acting a little strange and a little weird? It's because it's Wednesday. It's Rehair Hab Day, and I don't feel like doing it. And you know how sometimes when you don't feel like doing something, you just kind of act all weird? Anyways, that's what I do. So, I'm forcing myself to get this started, so... Without further ado, let, I have everything out right here, and it was 102 today. I'm burning up, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is put on my little wrap so I can cool down a bit, and then we'll get started. So I will be right back. Don't be alarmed. I'm just burning up. I'm hot. I don't want to do this, and I'm acting so out of character, so this is normal. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I'm a little bit cooler now. Okay, so I got a towel today, which if I put this on, it defeats the purpose because I'm still freaking hot. Freaking hot, I don't care. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at Baldy up here and see how Baldy's doing. We're gonna try, I'm gonna try to remember to check it every Wednesday and every Sunday. Get a good look. I hope this is being picked up on camera. Alright, so let's hope that registered. Alright, so today is Wednesday, the second, the Wednesday of the second week. So we've done Sunday, Wednesday, this past Sunday, and now today we're at Wednesday again. And whew, I think I'm going to be sweating up in here. All right, I'm going to try to ignore it. So what I'm going to do, uh, as you know, we've been going over the book. What's this book called again? 17 Ultimate Guide, 17 Magazine's Ultimate Guide to Guys. What he really thinks about flirting, dating, relationships, and you. I've got it in plastic so that I don't get my pages all oiled up so I can kind of relax. So today we're going to be talking about... Talk to any guy. So these, this section today is telling these young girls what the young guys think. So today's tips are actually from the young guys that they've um, talked to. And these tips, it says, keep these dude approved ways to say hi to any guy in your back pocket. Just in case, whatever that means. So keep these dude approved ways to say hi to any guy in your back pocket. Just in case. Oh, okay. Let me say that again. <laughs> it says keep these dude approved ways to say hi to any guy in your back pocket just in case you come across a guy um, and you need to say hi. It was kind of weird when I was reading it the first time. So as you see before I get off into that because there are six tips from six guys ages 18 and 19 I think that's the oldest 19 years old so 18 and 19 year old guys are giving their tips on how to say hi to them and what they would like to see from a young guy okay so before we get into that ooh, let me just say give an update on my hair these ponytails are nice and moisturized. They've definitely held the moisture. However, still up in this area, it's not dry and it doesn't feel hard, but it is the driest area of my hair. Um, oh, that's the toilet. It has an auto flush thing. I um, hope you can't hear that, but if you can, that's what that is. So, this part of my hair, it's not dry. It's not super dull or anything like when I'm coloring it but it's not as shiny as I would like it to be but it's definitely it doesn't feel dry and hard and hay like it definitely feels soft so that's cool so the product that I'm using is being absorbed into my hair and it is keeping my ponytails moisturized very nicely and um, is, there's a lot of elasticity in here, so it feels very healthy. You can see the stretch. It feels very springy. 
Um, so I think that's a good sign as well. And um, during the week, as I told you, I'm only going to be dealing with these two ponytails. It allows me to get in and out pretty quickly and get the stuff on my hair. So you can see what my hair is looking like. And I really like too um, how I am using just a minimal amount of the Shea Bay powder because remember I told you when I did this before and I did the full on Shea Bay treatment, that was just a bit much and it was very messy going on. But it, I really feel like the moisture was a little bit more moist because of the Shea Bay and I feel like those bits and granules of the Shea Bay probably are is what keep the moisture in your hair that's just my guess I have no idea of how it really works but that's <clears throat> just what I think based off of having using it having had used it back then versus now because back then I used so much more of it I really caked it in there but that moisture really lasted like real moist in my hair like almost damp like not too damp where it was a problem but the dampness definitely lasted a lot longer than this however what I'm doing now I like it's actually to me perfect because my hair like I said it's definitely soft it's not moist it's, there's no dampness there but it's soft and you can tell that it's um, that it's uh, retaining or maintaining the moisture levels that I would like for it to maintain for the time period that I would like for it to maintain it for, which is the from Sunday to Wednesday and then from Wednesday to Sunday. Uh, what else can I say as I take these braids out? Because remember, tonight is Wednesday, so we're only going to do the, just the re-moisturizing of the hair, just putting the product in there, but we're not deep conditioning tonight. So it's gonna go by quicker once I get these braids out but I like to do it in real time with you guys who are doing it with me so that way we can start together and finish together and just have a nice conversation while we go along the process and I don't expect to see too much of a difference you know as far as my hair really thickening up and this baldy up here really filling in I'm gonna give that probably three months before I really look for any type of improvement there but I still want to since I'm on camera every you know two days a week I may as well get it on camera so I can have a point of reference so let's go ahead and get started and we're just gonna put this little one over here to the side like that and then we're gonna start off with my water just to recap start off uh, what is that something maybe? Here. Little things like that bug me if I see something because I don't like spiders. I want to make sure it's not a spider or something. Alright, so <laughs> we start off by wetting our hair with water. You don't want to go too wet. You don't want to oversaturate, but you do want it to dampen it so that when you put the product on, it's locking in some moisture. From there, I put this hair food on my scalp. If you want to know what's in here, just go back to the first video and start with me and catch up. Um, then from there we're doing this this is not this product here this is just a container but this is my uh, cream base that has some of the little Shea Bay powders and some other oils in there and then I hit it up and this just goes on my hair strands from about an inch down my hair strands not on my scalp and then this is the old school grease that goes on top and you see I'm almost out of that but don't fear because I've got back up here Okay, so now that you know what I'm doing, if you're just joining us, that's what I'm doing. So let's start off with some moisture um, on my hair and then I'm going to go ahead and start discussing today's topic on the tips that they gave us from these youngins on how to say hi to a guy. For you young girls out there who don't know how to say hi to a guy, well this is what the guys have to say about that. So let's jump into it and the first tip says sneak him your number this is from a little boy named Andrew let's see Andrew is 19 and Andrew says at a big party a girl I have been pursuing came up to me and grabbed my phone she put her number in it 
before handing it back to me and then walked away. Not only was it creative, but it was also a very confident move that I found immediately attractive. I texted her back right away. Now, that definitely doesn't sound original or like nothing anyone's seen before. I think that tip is kind of old. I don't think that's anything new or genuine or creative. I mean, you can see that in any, any movie today. Like that's a tried and true one, I guess. It's probably more played out than anything. But that's a guy and that's from a guy's point of view thinking that's a great way to get a guy a, a great way to say hi to a guy so I've never done anything like that in my past present and don't plan to in my future but I can see that that would be something um, that could be age appropriate for these girls today what I like about that tip is that it's um, it's safe, it's not too scandalous, it's not too, um, cause these girls, you know, be moving too fast today. So I feel like that's, that's a, like an innocent kind of cute little fun uh, tip. And especially coming from a guy, if this is coming from a guy and it's saying, he's saying to him, he found it creative and it made him call, then there you go. It's straight from the horse's mouth that that's a tip that a girl could use to get a guy's attention. However, that was just for Andrew, who is 19. All right, now I still have to shave, so if you guys see any hairs, I'm trying to keep them off camera, but I do need to shave under my arm, so don't panic if you see some hairs. I'm clean, that's all that matters. All right, the next tip is use a slick line. Now that is definitely not uh, ingenious use a slick line. I mean, they've been doing that since the dawn of man, but let's see what he says. This is from, what's this boy's name? Ryan, who is 18. Ryan says, I was in the kitchen at a party when this girl asked if I wanted a drink. She said she, she said, she said she'd grab an extra for her friend, but couldn't find her. I took it and we ended up talking for the rest of the night. Later, she confessed that she made it up as an excuse to talk to me, and it worked. So again, nothing uh, pretty ingenious there. These are things that these little boys probably saw in a movie or something. But nonetheless, they're fun, they're cute, and you know, if that works, it works. I think there's nothing wrong with it. I wouldn't say that's a bad tip. You know, I'd say it's worth a try if it's something that um, someone is willing to do then go ahead, go for it, and see if it works for you. It's, it's harmless, it's innocent. Um, the only thing I would suggest is when you get a drink, make sure it's not alcoholic in case somebody's a recovering alcoholic. You don't want to tempt them and have them relapse or anything like that. But yeah, I think that that's a good tip to try. What do you guys think? You know, offer, you know, get two drinks and act like you bought one for your friend who you can't find so you go over and offer it to a guy however this day and age like for me I don't trust people like that to just a stranger walking up to me offering a drink first of all I don't drink anyway so it wouldn't work but if it was ice cream I might be tempted but whatever it was if it's in a container that is not closed and sealed and you know and I don't know you I wouldn't take it anyway and that's a lesson that uh, people need to learn. Just because you might be attracted to someone who's offering you something just because it's free. You know, it's a stranger. People doing crazy things today. Crazy, crazy things. And just don't get caught up by someone who you might think is cute or looks like he has money or whatever, you know, might attract you to this person enough to think it's safe to take a drink from a stranger. I just, I think that's, oops and this is the one that just goes on the hair. I think that's just bad advice to take a drink from somebody you know. And kids today are in some wild stuff. I mean, you gotta be careful and you gotta choose your friends wisely. So, you know, they have a lot of stuff going on today at these young parties and these young events, things that kids shouldn't really be involved in. But this generation is moving very fast. I feel like in many ways they're moving too fast, but we're not going to get off topic. So I'm just saying all that to say, um, 
you know, somebody offers you a drink, if it's sealed, packaged, you see, you can see it hasn't been opened or tampered with, and then you feel comfortable, you know, taking it from this person, then yeah, you know, give it a try. Um, but just be careful. Even though they're suggesting that you be the one to do it, you know, just again, you know, whoever you got it from, make sure that it's someone you can trust before you go offering it to somebody else. But at the end of the day, if it's alcohol, just stay away from it. Please. These kids can't handle alcohol like today. Even these uh, adults can't. And it just causes a lot of problems with people drinking and driving. So I would say on that note, offer them something. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a drink. Unless it's like a drink that's not going to impair their ability to drive or to get home safely. All right, enough of that one. So what do you guys think about that tip? Have you ever tried buying an extra drink and, you know, pawning it off as though you bought it for someone else just so you can, you know, create an entrance to go say hi to a guy? I mean, is it that serious? Is it, was it work doing? Did you do it? Did it work? Etc. Let me know in the comments below and then we'll move on to tip number three. Okay? Before I go to tip number three, I would like to say that my gray hair is growing out. I want you to see the rate that it's growing out. That's why I'm doing this while my hair is in need of a color session. But I want you to see how far out I let it grow <coughs> sometimes to keep my hair. Um, I feel like it helps my hair stay healthier um, in the sense that it, the, anytime you put color on your hair, even if it's henna, whatever it is, it's very drying to the hair and in case this has been a contributor to any of the issues I've been having I am definitely stretching it out as much as I can so that's why you see me showing so much gray and honestly this gray comes back so fast it's like once I henna my hair I don't get a lot of uh, wear time with the uh, gray being turned black. It doesn't really last long enough for me to do it. The only reason I do it is because I don't want that gray to start growing all the way down and it looks all half and half. So when I get to the point where I can't take looking at it anymore, then that's when I um, go ahead and, and put my next henna treatment on there. But for now, <clears throat> you're going to see me letting it grow out for those reasons, you know, just to improve the health of my hair and also to... Um, prevent the whole dryness factor because after I henna it, it is dry but doing this is definitely going to help and because I haven't been doing this in the past you know I'm thinking it could be a contributor to what's been going on with my hair so get used to seeing the gray because it's going to be around for a while and I'm okay with that because I'm old now you can run but you can't hide I'm not going to waste my time or money trying to stay on top of this. And I'm not afraid of it, you know. I just don't like the skunk headband look. Or if I wanted to part it down the middle, this look where it's just that big gap part looking look. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. I just want my hair to be healthy and moisturized. And I, like I said, around month three, is when I will expect to hopefully see a drastic difference. Not drastic, but to see um, a noticeable difference in my hair from doing this routine every Wednesday and every Sunday for the rest of our lives. <laughs> so, I like to do the braid as well because the braid really keeps it in order, it keeps it entangled, and it helps my sessions go by pretty quickly um, like tonight it's already parted for the most part it's detangled now it's not truly detangled right now but it's detangled enough for me to not have to use a comb or a brush to you know tonight or you know on Sundays when I do it it's manageable because I'm just working with the same sections the same parts I'm not trying to recreate the hairstyle, recreate the sections or anything like that. So that's why I like to keep it in the ponytails. And it just keeps it neat and orderly, as you see. The twists, 
loosen up too much and they allow the hair to pop back into, oh dang it, this little piece, man. <sighs> Hold on. I don't like leaving it out because the thing gets tangled up and it starts catching on stuff. So let me. Uh, this, and it always, this little piece. Do you guys have this issue? There's a little piece. Hold on, let me see if I can maintain this. See this little piece right here? It always likes to pop out. See, come on, man, cooperate. All right. Did I get him? Look it! Come on, dude. What I gotta do? See, this is messing up my time right here. But, um, my hair, even with this on, like, over, this is what I like about doing this. Over time, when you, well, like, when I moisturize my hair, it feels so soft right now. I want to poke myself. So soft. Did I get it? I think I got the bulk of it, so this little piece, there's a little piece back there that I didn't get. I just made this part not neat. Alright, so anyways, I think what I was saying was I keep it in the braids because the braid, and this braid, I'm not doing a tight braid, and that's what I like about it, like I'm not squeezing and making those loops tight. You can do a loose braid, but it still has a good degree of control over it making it look more tight than what it is but it keeps everything um, manageable so once I take it down like if I took this down tomorrow this moisture that's in here now would be really nice it would still be very because I can tell by how it's feel like doing this on a regular and you get the buildup of moisture in there um, it really feels nice keeping the Shea Bay to a minimum like I have in that uh, that cream based product which is the Cantu leave-in conditioner keeping the Shea Bay to a minimum in that definitely keeps the, the product build up to a minimum as well so I don't want my hair to be smelling like nuts and grains you know that earthy earthy smell because that's kind of what the Shea Bay uh, smells like to me so this right here I don't like to really do the twists anymore, but I really don't like to have this much loose at the end. So, what I'm going to do is, let me see, I think my fix for this will be, since I can't, I'm trying to drop these little hairs off. Drop! Okay. So, since I don't want too much to be like this, because all it will do is kind of tangle on itself, so I'm going to go ahead and just take this and do just a little, little bantu knot where the braid stopped. But again, just a loose one. So I'm just going to start turning it on itself, but loosely, very loosely. I'm not pulling it tight at all. Okay. And so that's what I do when I can't get that, when I don't have the portions of the hair nice and even all the way down. <coughs> I'll just go ahead and do a little bantu nut down there. Okay, so that's the first side. So now let's get to side number two, but let's get to tip number three because there's six in total. So we'll go over the remaining three tips on this other half of the hair. See how I stalled very nicely? I knew you know that's what I was doing, right? Okay, so tip number three is by Chad. Chad is 19 years old and Chad says, <clears throat> buy a head, B-U-Y a head. He says, I was paying for coffee at Starbucks when a girl interrupted me and said it was on her. I turned around and she said, I love your smile and just couldn't pass up the chance to talk to you. And he said it was definitely a ballsy move. So he actually appreciated that where the girl was behind him and he was paying for his coffee. And she just said, you know, and she said it was on her. So that's a nice little switch, nice, fun little switch, because normally, you know, women are used to men doing stuff like that, especially when it comes to paying for things. You know, that's a, normally a male move where men uh, offer to pay for something, especially like a drink in the bar for those people who drink when they go out and someone sends you a drink over. Now, I know you've seen that in the movies a million times. 
So this is kind of a switch on that. And I like the fact that it's at a coffee shop. It's not alcohol. It's not anything that's going to harm him or have him harm somebody else. So I like that. So this is a tip that I think is good, fun, cute, innocent. And I would say it's effective. Now, I've done something not to meet somebody or not to say hi to any guy, but a lot of times if I have like a gift card to um, like a Starbucks or Jamba Juice or anywhere really um, where it's a food related place like Baja Fresh, um, what I do is, let's say the gift card was for, I don't know, $20 and I go and I spend it and buy something totaling maybe like $18.35 and there's like a dollar 65 cents left on the car that you really can't get anything with unless you got to go back you got to um add money to it if you buy something else so when i get a gift card like that and when i use it and there's that just that little amount on it and it could be a place that i don't frequent that much then i after i use it and they give it back to me and they're like here you go you have a balance of a dollar 65 cents if there's somebody behind me in line, I just, when I walk away, I let them have it. And I say, here you go, here's a money to use towards your purchase. Cause I just don't want all those cards hanging around. So I do that all the time. And when I do it, people are always shocked. And you would think that you just gave somebody a million dollars or something. I'm like, it's only like $2 or, you know, less than $2. Sometimes it's just change, but they're so happy to get it, to receive it. And I think it just shocks people to think that just a stranger would just think to give them something because the reactions, it's, it's like the reactions are so interesting now, it's actually fun to do. But, so I can see, you know, this tip that this guy is saying, buy ahead, you know, just uh, treat somebody who's in front of you, just tell them, you know, it's on me type of thing. That really can make someone's day, especially if someone's having a bad day and someone does that just the thought that someone thought about them or thought enough to do that for them you know it could change their whole shape of their day and you know people have bad days a lot and a lot of people are walking around stressed especially today so that's a nice gesture just to do anyways but again the book is suggesting to do it if you wanted to talk to any guy that's definitely um, a good conversation starter. So I approve this tip. Uh, what's your name? Is it Chad? I approve Chad's tip. I think it's fun. It's innocent. And it can really um, make someone go from sad to happy um, in just such a, you know, quick, easy, tiny gesture, but could really make someone's day. So again, I've never done it to try and talk to someone, but I do something similar all the time when I have gift cards and I get gift cards a lot to Starbucks and what else or other like Cold Stone Creamery like the ice cream shop or even I think where else I would get gift cards. Oh no I get gift cards to Target a lot but I use those because I'm always having to add to that one so that one I don't do it but mostly for the food places like Chick-fil-A even though I don't eat Chick-fil-A but just as an example I'm sure they probably have gift cards um, but anyway yeah I think that's a good tip I think it's cute I think it's fun I think it's innocent I think it's harmless and I think it would work so what do you think have you guys ever tried that tip to pay it what did he he called it buy ahead that's how he worded it but you know some people might say pay it forward that same idea and then that's just good to do in the world today because sometimes like I said you never know who day you might be making so try the gift card tip and you'll see people are so happy to get like two dollars or less because it's just the thought that really gets them it just it just really shocks them and I'll just be like here you go there's something blah 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 on the card and I, I don't even know who's behind me I just know I'm gonna do it when I get it back so yeah i would approve that one um tip number five says be bold and this is by what's his name chris it doesn't give chris's age but chris says if we meet at a party put your hand on my arm and tell me your name 
that kind of confidence is hot. So basically just walk up and take control. Put your hand on his arm and tell him your name. So Chris doesn't require much. Chris just wants a confident woman, a woman who's comfortable in her skin, comfortable enough to walk up to him and just say, you know what, what's up? My name is Mickey, how you doing? <laughs> so yeah, that's what Chris wants, that's all he expects, just confidence. And you should have that anyway, but confidence goes a long way. Confidence um, uh, projects an energy that people definitely respond to. If you don't like yourself and you're insecure about who you are, that projects as well. So you, you don't want to do that. People will respond to what you project. So if you're in there and you're acting like you don't even like yourself or you're just like you feel like you shouldn't be there, then you'll project that energy and people will treat you like you're not there. They don't want to come up to somebody who doesn't have that confidence. So in other words, if you don't like you, how do you expect somebody else to like you? Now that I've lived through that kind of insecurity when I was younger, so I know exactly what that feels like. And being on the flip side of that, it's just things you go through when you're young. It's like you need someone to talk you through that and really coach you and let you see like how the human psyche works. And you, someone needs to point out to you and get you to, you know, try things and be more bold. Just for yourself, really. Not for a boy, not to meet somebody, but for yourself. It is important to have self-confidence for you. Because you hold yourself back when you don't believe in who you are. If you think you don't uh, have what it takes or you shouldn't be somewhere. I mean, you hold yourself back in that regard. So, yeah, I think that Chris makes a good point when he just says be bold at the end of the day if you do that and whoever you walk up to says you know they snatch their arm away or they somewhat reject you you haven't lost anything you didn't have anything when you walked up there and if you walk away with nothing you've lost nothing but you have the potential to gain something positive and number one would be the confidence. Number two, maybe, you know, a good introduction to a nice person. So, you know, be bold. There's nothing wrong with being bold. It really helps you in the long run because in life, you're gonna have to be in a position sometimes to have that courage and that confidence in yourself. So a lot of these tips that they are applying to relationships and just meeting boys and stuff, these are tips that will come in handy in life as well. So don't just uh, think that this is you know that you can just solely use this for meeting some guy I mean there are much more important things you can use <laughs> this for as well so the last tip says take the seat next to him and this is from Dylan Dylan is 18 and Dylan says when a cute girl sits next to me in class I notice once a girl caught me checking her out and called me on it and it was sassy and I loved it. So take the seat next to him. It's kind of the same idea of being confident and bold. So she took the seat next to him and he was checking her out and she called him on it. Are you checking me out? You know, that type of thing. And he loved it. So there you go. These are tips from the young boys to the young girls. Um, and they're all nice and innocent tips, so I approve, I approve, um, but more importantly, young girls, keep your mind on your studies first. These boys going to be here when you ready. These are some fun and cute little tips. Keep it nice and fun and light. You know, you got plenty of time to get all serious and acting crazy over a guy. I should never get to that point. I'm trying to... It's a little longer, isn't it? I'm trying to make my little bantu nuts even. You guys can't even see. I'm trying to even these up. Here we go. Um, so yeah, these are fun tips. I think these would be innocent tips that I think uh, it's safe to pass on to these young girls, but it shouldn't be their priority by any means. They should be focused on you know what's really important and that's self-improvement you know their education 
getting themselves in a position to, you know, make something out of their lives and move forward. There's always going to be time to date boys and you don't want to start this stuff too early and get your focus on something that's not going to truly benefit you. So this is fun to go over these and to really see what they're telling them. And I don't think they're telling them anything too scandalous, but on that same token, I would like to have them add some focus on your education type of, uh, and not just education, but self-improvement, you know, just talk about themselves first. Like, don't base it around just a guy, but I mean, I guess there's other books and things out there that they have for that. So this is strictly, you know, for fun, for boys, because that's what girls are definitely in today. A lot of them want to start too soon, too early and get caught up. But um, hold on, let me get a tissue so I can dry my hand, wipe my hands off. So we're done. I don't know how long that took. We'll see when I upload this video, because as you notice, I didn't stop. Maybe in the beginning, but I don't think I stopped when I started my hair. So we're doing this in real time. Um, so there we go. So I will see you again on Sunday. And remember, have your stuff ready so you guys can do this with me and so we can chit chat. I know when I have to do my hair, I would always try to find a video that was long enough, that someone was yapping long enough to get me through my hair session. So that's what I'm trying to do with these and to try and give you some interesting conversation. I've got some other books and some other interesting topics that we can use when we get through with this one. Or you guys can tell me right now if you like these topics or if you want me to switch it up. I have one that gives a lot of good cooking tips. I have one that gives a lot of good makeup tips.